Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I have the biggest ever gaming gains. This is episode 3 for all of July, the games I bought. I have 60 games for this pickup, absolutely massive, spanning over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 different consoles. So, without taking too much time, let's get into it. Let's start with the Nintendo consoles, starting with the Wii U. The only thing I bought for the Wii U, but it is worth showing off, this is the Disney Infinity 2.0, the Marvel Super Heroes pack. Um, it's a starter pack, it comes with three figures. Let me, let me take off this sticker right now. But just before I do, as you can see, I picked this up for $15. This is brand new in the box. Um, I'll take the sticker off now. Now you can get a better look. This um, set comes with the Iron Man figure, a little Thor figure, and a Black Widow figure. It also comes with two of the game discs that comes with it. It comes with the um, dock that you put the characters on and it also comes with the game uh, the game so this is a big box as you can see um, I got this EB games $15 on sale reduced from $50 and honestly I didn't even think I was gonna buy any Disney Infinity games this is the first one that I've ever bought I've never played any um, I watched the reviews and I honestly thought they were pretty limited in their capacity I thought the idea was cool but if I'm gonna go for put and play figures, I'd rather go for Amiibos, so this will probably stay in the box, um, you know, and if I was going to play it, I'd honestly probably play it on next gen consoles, because I believe this is available, um, either this one or the next one is available on the PS4 and Xbox One. Let's move on to something retro, I don't think I've ever picked up anything retro on this channel before. This is the first time I've ever bought anything on this console, and it is the Neo Geo CD. So these games are... Uh, the Japanese versions, to my knowledge, they come in this little, this is how they were sent on eBay. I'm going to open them up and we can have a look at what they are. I'm always nervous when um, buying games. Oh, is there a fourth game here? For whatever reason, there's a fourth little disc here, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm always nervous about buying, um, you know, CD cases or plastic glass cases off eBay. But yeah, these are the Japanese King of Fighter games we have. 98 is this one um, on the Neo Geo CD. Comes with a little, the disc obviously there, and a little insert, as well as the manual, which is, um, you know, it doubles as the front cover. But here's the manual, as you can see. Uh, it appears to be in black and white. And all the text is in Japanese. Still, I'm pretty happy to have these. I don't have the console, but I saw them for such a good price. I saw them at $10 each. And so I decided to pick them up for that. Here's the King of Fighters 96. I apologize about the glare. God knows what year these came out. Um, oh, these are pretty collectible, I have to say. Um, oh, okay, the actual thing's broken here that holds the disc in place, but there's the disc. There's the insert and the manual again. I'm not going to go through all the manuals. Um, and the final one is the King of Fighters 97. So I have 96 uh, through to 98 on here. So, yeah, don't have the console to get a chance to play these, but look at the artwork on them. I had to have it. They're just so cool. Um, they have kind of like anime art style. Graphics, I love fighting games. There's the disc. And yeah, these were just too cool to pass up. Katana Battle Action Game on the Neo Geo CD. Not actually sure what this one is. It was just thrown in the lot. It wasn't said to be included. I'm not sure if this is a game. Um, but I have that as well. Um, I was looking at a collector's edition. I was looking at a collector's edition on the Xbox 360 of Assassin's Creed 3, the Join or Die edition, and I noticed the seller was selling a bunch of PC games. They just had them listed as PC games. They didn't have them listed individually. And a lot of these are actually collector's editions, so I decided to pick them up as well and get them all bundled, sent together. Now, I picked all of these up for around about $5, all of them together. So I'm gonna go over them one by one. This is the Dark Souls Prepare to Die edition. 
Um, so it has all these goodies on the back here. Um, as you can see, retailed for $69.95. So let me get this open and see what's in here. I didn't know if these were complete. I didn't know what they came with. I didn't know any of the games, but yeah, this is absolutely complete. So this one comes with a booklet here and keep it, keep in mind here. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games for $5. So like this is less than a dollar each. Um, less than a dollar I paid for this game. So this is a little uh, art book here in the Prepare to Die edition. Really, really cool. Now, I've, yeah, recently started, I guess, collecting PC games. Here's some postcards. They're um, sealed in a little plastic thing. I'm not going to take them out. But there's about, there's quite a few in there, probably about eight. And here's the game. Um, with one, two, three discs, so there's a behind the scenes movie and I assume the game disc and the, maybe the expansion or something like that. There's the manual with the codes on the back, which I'm not going to show you guys. They might be used, I don't know, but just to have the physical um, collector's edition like this is pretty darn cool. Let me see if I can put this back together. So yeah, I don't typically collect PC games, for, but for this price, like, I had to pick it up. Next is a copy of, it's quite dusty, Battlefield 3 on the PC here. Just your standard edition. Next is a game called Broken Age. I think this is either a adventure game or, you know, a point, I think it's a point and click adventure game. Maybe started off as an indie title. Um, it has the code on there, so I'm not going to show you guys that, but that's two CDs in there. Next, which is quite dusty and dirty, but still really cool to have, is The Witcher 2 uh, Assassin of Kings. Now, this is like just this big black box, which opens up like so. Whoop. And then you've got a bunch of stuff in here. So you have the... The game there, two discs, you have the bonus DVD and official game soundtrack here. So this must be some sort of collector's edition, yeah, there's two discs in there. Um, you have a little envelope type thing, which is still sealed, so that's going to stay sealed. You have some stickers, which are all, um, you know unused right now. I'm just trying to see if I can show you guys these stickers one by one. <laughs> um, they're stickers are they? I don't know what these are actually. Sorry, this is a, these are puzzles you can put together. Actually, they're like cut out puzzles that you fold together. Remember I used to do that in school as a kid. Anyway, I have, oh my god, more of these puzzles right now. I don't know <laughs> what the deal is with these, but they're pretty cool nonetheless. Fold these back up. Um, okay, this is the outside that used to sit over it as like a, like that, like to say it's the Australian edition. So this is the premium edition. Um, so that's cool to have that. I always like to have that with the um, classification and whatnot on it. Here we have a map, a very big map, like a maybe A3, am I holding this the right way up? Yes, A3 sized map, something like that. So I can't believe, like there's some things you can actually find if people just want to get rid of them, like um, it was a female seller and she was maybe just selling like her, I don't know, I don't want to assume anything, but maybe like her ex-boyfriend or something games or just selling games that she didn't know about. I can't fold that back up. And then you have the game guide here. So yeah, like some things you can still get cheap if you if you just have a little bit of luck and you stumble on something. Um, but yeah, I purely stumbled on this only because I was looking at something else she had. Now that, <laughs> I'm going to put all this together, back together later. Because that was a lot. Oh, that came with it too. So still in the same lot here we have Dungeons 2. The limited special edition. 
right now. Never heard of this. Oops, something's falling out. Never heard of this game, but Dungeons 2. I'd love to check this out. Like, um, I, I'm kind of getting on a lot of more PC gaming. You know, I've been on a real-time strategy kick. Um, so this appears to does this fold up or something, or is this just a little bit busted? Does this fold open? Yeah, okay, this folds open. Right now, we had a Velcro that was kind of like I didn't want to rip it. Um, folds open like that, and you have some absolutely gorgeous artwork here. And see, there's like a Velcro thing there. I don't know if you can see that, but that sticks shut. And then you just pull the game out like this. Now this one might not be including the stuff, it's supposed to come with a character magnet, a soundtrack CD, postcards, and DLC. Well, what have we got here? Okay, we've got, we've got the postcards. <laughs> we got the postcards here. I'll show these off one by one. Awesome artwork on this. Never heard of this game. And then we've just got... Yeah, so no character magnet, but the game nonetheless. And um, the manual right here, basic manual with the code on the back. So yeah, crazy. Like I'd definitely be keen to get into collecting old PC, like big box or collector's edition PC sets, especially stuff that's exclusive to the PC. Um, there's a lot of games that I have on like download um, on, you know, Xbox Live or something like that, that actually have physical editions on the PC. So, you know, also we used to have the games, all, every single The Sims original, the first one, plus the expansions, we had all of them in CD and in the boxes, and, you know, I used to have the Age of Empires 2, um, collector's edition, or with all of it, like the DLC, everything, the original one, back from like 2000 something. I had Age of Empires 3 with the expansion, a fold-out thing. You know, we used to have Worms 2, Age of Empires, The Sims 2, The Sims 2, Open for Business. We had The Sims 3, all these PC games that we got rid of. So I'd be interested one day, not anytime soon, because I spent a heap of money for this month, like 60 games in here, absolutely insane. But anyway, continuing on, we have Diablo 3. Um, this just appears to be like a big box edition. Like, these are a little bit beat up, but honestly, for the price I paid, these have really cool, um, the packaging feels really cool. So it comes in a plastic, uh, sorry, not plastic, it comes in a cardboard box. This is the game DVD, so the game, um, with the code on the back, and it slips out like that, so I'm not going to show the code. This is the manual, or something. We have here... Some guest passes for World of Warcraft. Um, not going to show these because they have the codes, but Diablo 3. I don't know, invite a friend. Diablo 3, invite a friend. Diablo 3, invite a friend. So some passes, not sure what that's about. And, oh, this is cool. We have a notepad for, uh, you know, putting notes in the game. And, like, does anyone actually use these things? I hope not because they're part of the collector's edition. I like to keep them because, like, they have... A print on there, I don't know if you can see that. Um, some of the workers going past, so we put that doesn't go with that. Put all that back together later. That is all of the PC games, and I not I shit you not, I got them all for like five dollars or something. Um, because I put the postage together and the bid was like 99 cents, and I paid like put them in together with the other one, ten dollars postage all up. So the other one I paid like maybe ten dollars for, and those ones like all up, I paid something like eighteen dollars so for for all those plus the xbox 360 game which i was already gonna pay like fifteen dollars for so you gotta work it out what did i really get them for so that's absolutely epic just one game here i picked up for the playstation portable and that is pursuit force i watch metal jesus rocks channel and he recommends this game in the hidden gems series with reggie so there's pursuit force on the psp been buying a heap of psp games my collection has grown um, innumerably in size since I got the console, which is absolutely awesome. I might do a collection video on that um, sometime soon. 
Moving on now to the... Uh, we'll stick with the PlayStation. We'll go with the PlayStation 3 now. Here is where the bulk of the collection is at. I've talked about this on the channel before. Now is the cheapest time to be buying for 7th generation consoles and even like 6th generation. Actually last night my girlfriend and I fired up the old PS2. We fired up the slim model which I have had for years. I beat it like a dead horse. <laughs> I must have put like thousands if not tens of thousands of hours into that machine and I kid you not I played that machine for a good like 15 years of my life um, at least you know three four times a week like I'm not kidding um, massive sessions on that so that machine lasted me so well and I'm so proud of that machine I guess but like last night it just wouldn't work I couldn't get it to work so we got the fat PS2 going from my brother-in-law and that is how we played Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex um, a nostalgic game for my girlfriend, so she's never beat it, so we started playing that last night. Anyway, that's not what this video is about, but yeah, like, it just surprised me. Like, I thought those games were so old that I didn't even think they were working when I tried them, but it was actually the console that gave out before the game, so, you know, you can still buy 5th, 6th generation games, and they play 100% if people look after them. They were my original copies. We also were playing, trying to play um, Vice City, my original copy back from you know, two th early 2000s. 2001 Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex came out. Man. Anyway, getting into these, um, I got a bunch of lots, so some of these games I wouldn't have typically bought, including this one. This is Tom Clancy's Hawks 2. Never play it, I won't. Transformers War of Cybertron. This is one I've been after for a while. These are the best, um, you know, video games to get into the Transformers series. They're really good. They have really good campaigns. They have online multiplayer. I'm not sure if that's still up because they're kind of an old game. Excuse me, there's another game in this series. Slips my mind right now, but awesome games. Like, believe me, if you um, want to get into this, the Transformers universe, this is a great way to start if you don't want to watch the animated series. Um, so picked up a copy of Killzone 3. I Did I already have this one? Maybe. Maybe it came in a lot. I think I already had this one, but if not, there you go. Uh, now, I actually doubled up on here, and that is my mistake. A couple of cases I doubled up here. Okay, so yeah, that was my mistake. Um, I didn't put these into my collector's app quick enough, and I doubled up, and I literally bought so much for the month. Like, if you guys watch all of my games videos plus my unboxing video, you'll understand. I bought this all in, in the month. So, like, things just get out of hand. So, anyway, I bought two copies of Warhammer 40k Space Marine. This is the preferred copy, and this is the copy I got of EB Games. Buy one, get two free, so I got this for six dollars. Um, now I am getting into the Warhammer 40k universe massively with the video games. I'm getting, I've been playing um, Warhammer Dawn of War, the real-time strategy game, like crazy. And honestly, I played the, the original, I, you know, did everything in it. And I beat the campaign, I went on to the um, winter campaign, I can't remember what they're called, Winter Assault, did the campaign, did everything, did all the new races, played some maps, you know, played some multiplayer, and now I'm on the Dark Crusade campaign. I've just been playing the t hell out of it, getting into the series and the world so much, been watching YouTube videos, been researching the lore and the history, been looking at the units, I want to start um, getting back into collecting them. That's the problem though, and I know I'm going a bit off tangent here, but that's the problem, like, with Warhammer, I love the, just displaying the mini tabletop figures and, and whatnot, but I was terrible back when I was a kid, I've showed them in a previous video, I was terrible, um, at building them, gluing them together, seriously, I was so bad, and the worst was painting them, I have no attention to detail when it comes to painting, I have no patience when it comes to things like that, I don't have the tiny little, um, motor skills to kind of not go over a little bit and paint this, and I'm just horrible at that artistic flair, so I almost would love for someone else to make them and me buy them, because they, ah, oh, it's just, the, they're already expensive, and the time to do it to display them, I wish I could just buy a set, or, you know, get someone to paint them for me, I'm not kidding, if I had the money, I would employ someone to paint a bunch of these figures, just for one day or something, um, give them, you know, whatever they wanted, and, uh, have a few beers afterwards and just have these figures to display. Now there's a new Warhammer 40k set that just came out. I wanted to jump into it, but that's the same problem, man. Like, I even have some of the old pieces, some of the old Space Marines, Ultramarine sets that I could build and paint. Even to this day, they're still locked in place and I could snap them all out and build them. 
but I just can't do it. Back then I was so bad and I know I was like 10 years old, but I, let me tell you, I know myself and I don't think I'd be any better. Um, I also bought Space Wolf, or I shouldn't say bought, it was a free download. What did I buy? No, it was a free download on the iOS store, the app store. Um, I also got, oh my God, I can't remember, the Dark Watch Enhanced Edition on Steam. I got another game on there on Steam, uh, the Fantasy Warhammer equivalent to Dark Watch. I forget what that's called, but I've been getting into the series so much and I can't wait to start playing Space Marine on the PS3. I'll be starting that one soon. Previously, I only had the Essentials Edition of God of War, so <laughs> I went overboard. Now I have, believe it or not, four editions of this game. I have the Essentials Edition. I have two of the regular Black Label Editions, which is what I was really after. But, you know, I paid $6 or less for both of these, but still that's annoying. Plus, I had the Collector's Edition, so can never get enough God of War, apparently. I bought, um, you know, Infamous. I had bought this in the black label, but I got the freaking platinum disc. I bought it and boom, got the regular disc. Thank you, EB Games, for being shitters. I, uh, Red Faction Gorilla already owned this on... Xbox 360, it came with a lot. Duke Nukem Forever, already owned this on Xbox 360, came with a lot. Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of Patriots, Technical Espionage Action. This is the Platinum Edition. Look how dirty these borders are. How filthy. I'm obviously gonna get rid of this one and um, get it, trade it in for a black label. Only collect black labels. Fuck, these are so dusty. These are so dusty. Mass Effect 2 with the bonus um, content on the PlayStation 3 edition because it was delayed. I have the trilogy set on the digital um, PlayStation store of Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. I have, I think, the third one on Xbox 360, so this one just came in a lot. But cool to have. I'm probably more looking for the um, trilogy collector's set on PlayStation 3. It comes in like a slip case with all three standard editions, including this one in it, so that's what I'll be after. Brink, already owned it, um, came in a lot. Dead Space 3, already owned it on Xbox 360, came in a lot. My girlfriend and I actually were looking for a multiplayer game to start playing, and I wanted to play this with someone, so I said we should both get on the PS3, because it has free online. She owns a PS3, but then I realized I bought the DLC on the Xbox 360, so probably gonna get rid of this one. South Park's The Stick of Truth Signature Edition. This is the USA North American version. The reason for that is that the PAL Australian edition is censored actually and it even um, shows a little koala bear that says, sorry Australians, we had to censor this because of our stupid um, censorship laws. Nowhere else in the world gets as much stuff censored as here, apart from maybe like Germany. Um, but our censorship laws are ridiculous. We didn't even have an 18 plus label restriction for gaming until like late 2000s. I'm not even shitting you, it was fucking ridiculous. So if it was like deemed R18 plus, like 18 and over, we it would get refused classification and banned. That actually happened to Dark Sector on the Xbox 360 <coughs> and a bunch of other games. Anyway, this is the uncensored version. Unfortunately, I can't play this one with DLC and it comes with a couple DLC codes in here. So that's kind of disappointing. Maybe I should have got a PAL UK version because that was uncensored and we, the DLC from the Australian version, uh, you can use it on Australian consoles and um, PlayStation Network accounts. But can't wait to play this one. I saw my friend play it far out. The humor looked amazing. I love turn based RPGs. So that's one. Here's one I've been after for a long time. This is an. Chris? This is an anime-based video game. This is Afro Samurai on the PS3. Loved the anime because I love anything samurai or vaguely, you know, Japanese um, history influenced. So can't wait to start playing this one. Been after this one for a while. I, I gotta be honest, I, I'm such a Scrooge. I pay like dirt cheap for, um, why is this one look like this? I pay dirt cheap for friggin' um, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 games, I will not buy a game if it's like a standard black label edition unless it is like one figure money. I will not pay under, I will not pay over $10 for any games unless it's something that's like, you know, um, 
I haven't been able to find anywhere. If it comes with a slipcase or it's collect edition, then I'll jump up a little bit. But even then, it's not like I have limits of money, and I know it seems like I have a lot of money to throw around, but I pay very little for the games I get. Anyway, a absolutely pristine copy of Resistance 2 on the PS3. Believe it or not, this is one I was after um, to pick up and get. Seriously, I've breathed all that dust off those games into my lungs. I swear to God, my throat is drying up right now. Get the jumbo drink bottle out. Oh, I like new. Another one I've been after. <laughs> I just spat everywhere. Another one I've been after for the longest time. This is Overlord Raising Hell. Um, Raising Hell is the edition that comes with all the DLC. This is only available exclusive to the PlayStation 3. Love that little gold sticker there. And yeah, I've been after this one for a long time. Can't wait to start being the overlord of my minions, beating them into submission, showing them who their master is. Total sadist IRL. Can't wait to start playing Overlord. Sleeping Dogs. This is the Australia New Zealand edition, as it says up there. That's what ANZ stands for. Um, so this is a little variant that I had to pick up. Already owned it on PS3. Um, but yeah. ANZ edition. Star Trek, um, this one is a multiplayer game based on the new Star Trek, uh, is it movie or movie or series? I'm not a big Trekkie, but you know, I'm not actually into Star Trek or Star Wars. Like people are always like, what are you into Star Trek or Star Wars? And I'm more into Lord of the Rings. So <laughs> anyway, this one looks like a cool co-op game. It has a few bugs, but you know, in co-op, uh, it's the experience and the fun that matters. So there's that one. Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z Special Edition. Um, this one takes a really cell shaded art style to the Ninja Gaiden series. I love the series and probably won't be a while till I um, get around to playing this one, but good to have in my collection. It comes with a cool little, yeah, it comes with, so for starters, like the artwork on this is, the artwork on this it comes with some dead or alive codes or something. The artwork on this um, manual, Look at that, that is just, that could be like a graphic novel or something. Um, absolutely epic. Um, and yeah, this is a little comic book. This might even, this is by Dark Horse Comics who release graphic novels and comics and even some manga and even manhua from Korea um, and even manhua <laughs> from China. So yeah, maybe this was based on a graphic novel or something, but Awesome art style there. Um, another PlayStation Move game. This is PlayStation Move Heroes. So all three of these franchises I loved as a kid growing up. I loved Sly Cooper or Sly Raccoon. I loved Ratchet and Clank and I Jack was my Jack 2 Running Game was my first game on the PlayStation 2. I loved Jack and Dexter Precursor Legacy. Loved Jack 3. That was the best. Even played Jack X, the racing game. Um, yeah, he was an absolute awesome character. Like, I loved how dark and broody he got. But there's a PlayStation Move game. Um, I don't actually own a Move. Be looking at picking one up cheap so I can play that. And also the other Move game I bought, which is called Kung Fu Riders, I think. Conan. This includes a mini comic, apparently, which I don't think it does. But, you know, that's what it says on the sticker. There's Conan. Oh, it does include the mini comic. And this is beat up so bad, but Conan, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Can't wait to start getting into this one. Is this supposed to come with a manual or is this the manual? I don't know. Dark Horse Comics again. Props off to you guys. Look at the artwork of this. This is some brutal artwork. It's brutal! So there's Conan the Barbarian. That was really bad. This one requires a light gun. Oh, it requires move as well, I'm pretty sure. Um, or it has, it says features. I'm pretty sure it's a light gun game, as was the original. I love the original Time Crisis. What was it Time Crisis 3? I can't remember. On the PS1. God, that was a great game, you. Freaking hell, me and my friend put hours into that. I, I finally beat it, like, I would say like, Three years ago, borrowed it off my friend with the light gun. Epic game, loved that. I might even offer that guy some money for his games. He had some cool games. Ah, here we go, Time Crisis 4. Doesn't matter that that one includes it, here it is, and it's separate. Um, but yeah, 007 Quantum of Solace. This actually looks like a pretty decent game. There's a collector's edition. Um, starting, this is starring the Australian actor. God, I forget his name, but um, yeah. 
actually always been a fan of 007 games. Um, always found them really good first person and third person shooters. Always found them really quality. Like from the moment I played Goldeneye, I went on to play a bunch on the PS2, like <sighs> Agent Under Fire. There was another Goldeneye one. There was like Golden Eye something something or Golden Finger. That was a good one too. I really liked those. Anyway, also got Final Fantasy 13 too. I own Final Fantasy 13. Had to get the second one. Um, currently on PlayStation 3. The graphics are much better than Xbox 360. It tends to um, have slowdown and tear. So there's those. That's all for the standard edition PS3 games. Finally, the last one, which this is the main reason I bought the lot. It's in um, not as good condition as I would have liked it to be. But nonetheless, we have Mass Effect 3, the collector's edition on the PS3. This is in a like square-ish. Um, like packaging with you know a front plate that comes off like so to reveal the game here um, which comes out as well uh, and then behind that game there's this steel book and that's it for that but there's this steel book with the male commander shepherd and then the female commander shepherd and that has like a glossy foil effect kind of thing and I'm dropping shit everywhere so there's some codes in here I'll just get those out of the way quickly and then it has kind of like the game and everything else and there's also this little package which you know this is where it's at this is the goodies right here so you open it up like an envelope and there it is you flip this stuff out that's all of it so this is where the goodies is at Okay, first up, Dark Hawks Comic Strikes Again. This is Mass Effect Invasion, the first um, volume of the graphic novel or whatnot. So this looks awesome. Um, you know, I wish I was into comics and graphic novels more than I am, to be honest. Like, they're so unique compared to manga, which is like, you know, usually all black and white. And I loved reading them as a kid. I had a massive... Not a massive, but like, I had a pretty decent collection as a kid. Anyway, this is the little book, the artwork of Mass Effect 3. We get into it here. We have the character designs. Some, uh, you know, some of the locations. I can't open this. All sorts of stuff in there, so that's cool. And finally, what is this? This is a single postcard of what appears to be the ship or something. Don't know, never got up to Mass Effect 3. Um, still on the first one. Need to, need to beat that, so. Put all this stuff back. So yeah, really it's only the front cover that's a little bit scratched up. Still in acceptable condition, so definitely gonna keep that one. Um, now we're moving on to the... Oh, I should have done these with the PC, because Microsoft is kind of PC. Anyway, we're moving on to the Xbox consoles. I'm gonna start with the latest... Are we gonna... No, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do that last. We're gonna do the Xbox 360 now. So again, this is the remainder of the bulk of it. Um, probably do those last. Do that last. Do that last. Do that last. Do these last. Alright, we'll get... And there's some PS3 games in here, which I'm gonna edit back into the... PS3 section. I have Remember Me. Um, I saw this one reviewed on Good Game, and like, it was, a, I guess it was kind of average game, they said, but still, I liked it. I liked the story aspects, and I love a good story in a video game, so I got that one. I got the, um, <laughs> you, you couldn't call it black label, I guess just the white label of Gears of War, the Game of the Year edition, because previously I had the uh, classics version, which had like a platinum label. Everything was the same, but now I have the white label. Fantastic game, one of my favorite games. This is actually the game that made me buy an Xbox 360. Um, so, so nostalgic to me, love this game. It was the first game I got on 360 with, um, you know, I bought it from JB Hi-Fi and I bought a bunch of other games with it. One of them actually being one of these. So I also got The Rise of the Argonauts, um, a little bit of sticker residue. Nothing too bad, can still play the game. 
Love the setting of Jason and the Argonauts in Greece mythology going for the Golden Fleece. Can't wait to start playing this one. Hopefully it um, holds some pretty good gameplay. Chris, what's the matter? Again, got a white label of the original Gears of War. Previously had this one in the Classics Edition as well. Had to get this one. A little bit of fade on the side, but still um, absolute classic of a gaming series. Got Legendary. This game's hilarious. I watched a bunch of Let's Plays. Um, <laughs> The original unpatched version was full of glitches and ragdoll effects and like none of it was supposed to be in the game. That's, it was just so bad that it was good. It was kind of had that effect. Um, so this is a first person shooter with kind of, again, myth mythological aspects, um, supernatural aspects, pretty average game. Uh, it promised more than it could deliver. Also got Dead Rising 2 off the record. This is an alternate spin on Dead Rising 2. Never um, played Dead Rising to its, um, you know, all the way through. Never beat the game. Played it co-op with a friend, that's all. Also got X-Men Destiny, another game that promised more than it could deliver. But I know it's a bad game. I know it is, but I gotta be honest, the, still, even the idea of building your own X-Men is something that was... <laughs> I just crave, I want it to be good. So I'm still, I bought it to give it a chance. Just gonna let my cat out right now. On my way back, decided to get some M&M chocolate. Mmm, look at how good that looks. It's not focusing. Have any of you guys tried this chocolate? I actually really like it. I love the M&M minis. The hazelnut one's my favorite. Moving on now, had some uh, luck in EB games finding Fable 2. This is the limited collector's edition. It's a little bit frayed all over the edges, but um, this is one that I found for, uh, it was buy two, get one free. So what's a third of 14? It's like, um, four, five bucks, something less than $5, less than $5, um, $4.30. I think, <laughs> yeah, I got this one for $4.30. Um, yeah, so it has the slip case. This is the other game I was talking about was the, one of the first games I got with the Xbox 360. One of my favorite RPG franchises of all time. So here it is. Um, but unfortunately, EB Games, what did you do? You threw in the classics disc. Hell, oh, I can't deal with this anymore. Hopefully, man, there's freaking two manuals as well. I'm not complaining about that. <laughs> um, but yeah. There's this promotional thing for the Not Whole Island DLC, which I got because I got the Game of the Year edition with all the DLC on the disc. That is how you make a Game of the Year edition, seriously. So anyway, two manuals, no proper disc. I'm hoping the limited collector's edition just came with the normal disc so I can just freaking get one of those cheap and put it in it to make it complete. But nonetheless, happy to have the packaging, at least, of limited collector's edition Fable 2. Loved that game. <sighs> Talk about dust, man. I must have this sitting here for the whole month. Um, another game that I've been after for the longest time, specifically in this edition, that is LA Noir: The Complete Edition. So this comes with, oh, is that gonna focus? This comes with all the DLC, um, plus the original game. This is on Xbox 360. This is a game by Rockstar, um, a detective game where you, you, you know, uncover, uh, un, uncover and solve different crime um, cases, and you're kind of an investigator, and you're interrogating people, and you know, there was a lot of uh, what do you call it, a lot of facial animation used in this to kind of make it realistic to see if people were lying or not. So there's the manual. As you can see, it comes with four discs here and a fold out, uh, like digipack sort of thing. Anyway, so happy to have that one. Can't wait to jump in and start playing it complete with the DLC. Been after that one for a long time for a good price. Next, this is the game I talked about with the PC games where, um, you know, I got them all together. This is Join or Die Assassin's Creed 3. Um, so this edition comes in the slipcase. And I just have to say, Assassin's Creed 3 I now have all over the place. I played it on the PlayStation 3. 
I have the Washington edition on the PlayStation 3. I have the Washington edition on the Xbox 360. <laughs> I have this edition on the Xbox 360, so it's kind of just all over the place. But anyway, I could have tried to all get it on one platform, but what's the point in that? At least now I have the best of both worlds, and as long as you're getting the same edition, really doesn't matter to me. So there's the game. Um, and this comes complete. Now, some of the other ones didn't. Some of the other ones were missing. Man, this is... Oh, this has got so much weight to it. So this is the Join or Die coin, which is awesome. It really is so detailed. Um, and it has so much weight to it. It really feels like it's made out of something real solid. This is the pouch. The Assassin's Creed 3 pouch. This is what the coin goes in. And some of the ones I was looking at online didn't include this. This is the bookmark. It's not going to focus. This is the bookmark. Focus, damn you. There we go. Now it's focusing. This is the bookmark. Um, and some of the editions didn't include this. It's only paper thin, but it's like a featherish sort of bookmark. And that to, has to come with it to make it complete. Also comes with a mock kind of leather um, diary type thing, which has, you know, information on the game. It has character artwork. And this is just really cool the way it looks. Love the, um, how it looks like it's aged or something. Um, this is something that is, has a code to, this is advertising a figure. And this is a code for some other stuff. Not sure if those codes have been used, but I actually have all of the, um, DLC already on the play, on the PlayStation 3, so not like super fussed about that whether I use that or not because I played the game and I don't think I'd ever played on the Xbox 360 because I assume that the versions would just be identical pretty much there's also the Uplay Passport I actually wasn't I actually didn't mind Uplay like Uplay was cool in ideas the more games you play the more you can redeem um, rewards and stuff like that but it just never worked. Like, I could never, ever log into Uplay. I can never get it to frickin' accept my um, username or identification. And this is on the consoles, this is on the PC. It was just a pain in the ass. And when I wanted to redeem something, I never could. Anyway, there's the Join or Die edition in fantastic condition. I need some water, man. Next up is one I've been after for the longest time for a good price. My favorite game of all time is The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. On Xbox 360 I played it. I got the um, Game of the Year edition with all of the DLC, the Shivering Isles expansion, the Nine Nights or whatever that expansion is, all of that stuff and wouldn't you know it, I got the sequel the year it came out. I got Skyrim, I think it was 2000 and, oh my god, oh my god, 2012, 13, I can't remember when Skyrim came out but a long time ago. And um, I've never ever played Skyrim. I played it once very briefly and I knew I either I was in university at the time I either put down the console put down the gaming controller now or I lose the next three months of my life addicted to this game just like I was in oblivion. I just couldn't afford to at that stage of my life. I was working almost like full time and when I wasn't working I was doing university studying online and on campus. So <laughs> I waited and I, I'm glad I did. I picked up the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Legendary Edition. This is all the DLC plus the base game on one edition. This is all on the disc. It includes Dawnguard, Hearthfire, and also Dragonborn. This is everything in the game complete in one um, edition on the Xbox 360. Now I know I could have got this on the Xbox One, but because I've had the game on Xbox 360 for so damn long, I wanted to go back and play the edition that I had, the one that originally came out. It originally came out on this, the PlayStation 3, and also um, the PC. So it comes with a sticker that's kind of talking about the Elder Scrolls Online. So that's sign up for the beta of the Elder Scrolls Online. The Elder Scrolls Online was coming out when this was bloody released. There's the manual. Two discs. One is the install disc, the install onto the console, and the other one is the base game disc. So, 
comes with the slip case. So happy to have this one. I'm probably at a point in my life where I can start finally playing the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. I know I've missed out, I know I have been missing out, but there's no um, better way or better time to make up for lost time than to play the Legendary Edition with all the DLC. One I was fairly disappointed with is Sniper 2. This is the, um, I can't even say, Limited Collector's Edition or something. This is a steel book. It was supposed to, and these are things I care about, it was supposed to come with like this, like a slipcase over the top. And it was even shown on the eBay picture with the slipcase. I'm not going to try and do that. But it was even shown with the slipcase over the top with the Australian classification, um, the title, everything like that. And I do not consider this game complete unless it comes with that. So long story short, I got a full refund for this because I was so like, I'm sick of people having a picture of something and then sending it without it. Why have a picture of it with the slip and then not send it? Like, it just baffles me. So long story short, I got this game free and damn right, I know it's like a lot of people will be like, oh, don't be so finicky, don't be so picky, but I am damn it. It was listed like that, it was described like that, it was even shown like that, and it should have came like that. All right, so this is an edition I'd never seen before, and this is Tom Clancy's 10 years of gaming triple pack, three Tom Clancy games. This is the Australian edition. It has a foil um, uh, outer casing, like a collector's box like this. I'd never, ever seen this before. Um, I don't know if it's exclusive to Australia or a PAL um, or, you know, Australia and Europe. I don't know if there's a North American version, but isn't this such a cool version? This cost me about 20 bucks and, you know, I'm hoping that this black one isn't just thrown in there. Like, I'm hoping, because the other two are white and the other two, if you see, when I get them out, um, the other two are in these classics edition, but they're supposed to be because they even come on the back like this, you know, with the classics edition like this. Anyway, so this is um, Double Agent, the classics edition. And when you actually open them up, it comes with this 10 years of gaming. Like, um, so I'm thinking that they all have to have that to be complete and original. Uh, that's what separates them from just getting any of the versions and also the text is white, right? So in this 10 years of gaming, it basically goes through um, all the different series Tom Clancy's had, all that it's achieved. And you know, I love Splinter Cell. I actually really enjoyed uh, Rainbow Vegas. So that one has that one. And so does this one, right? This one also has it. This is Rainbow Vegas, the original. So the other one doesn't have it, and it has black text. As you can see here, I open it up and it doesn't have that. So I'm hoping that, you know, there's not, just this one's been thrown in to complete it. But if that's the case, it's, it's a little disappointing, but still for something I've never ever seen before, um, I had to buy it and it was a snap buy, like I bought it straight away because I thought it was so cool and I didn't want to risk losing it and never seeing it again. I looked on eBay, Nothing had been up in the last three months on this edition, so it's a cool little um, addition to my collection. So, we've done the majority, excuse me, of the games. We've done about 55, something like that, of the games, and we have the last console here. I'm nearly out of breath, and that is the Xbox One, so let's get into it. We have Watch Dogs, the Australia New Zealand Special Edition with the Breakthrough Pack. Um, never owned Watch Dogs before this, never played it. It was one of the earlier titles for, you know, the new consoles. Um, so excited to pick up a copy of Watch Dogs. And this is what I talk about, the restricted logo. We never used to have that. And so this game would have been either edited to meet 15 plus or refused classification. God, we had some stupid things in the gaming industry happen in our country, but there's Watch Dogs nonetheless. Alien Isolation Nostromo Edition. Again, another game that I was looking forward to getting. Um, I remember when this was announced at E3. I was a fan of the Aliens um, franchise. I watched them all, all four of them as a kid. And I, my favorites were definitely the second one. Um, and I actually did like the third one, so there you go. There's uh, a survival horror game, Alien Isolation. My Xbox 360 collection is slowly growing. I now have a copy of The Evil Within. I got this half price, um, so $12. I 
from EB Games. Um, open it up. This one looks like a really creepy survival horror game again. A lot of gore, a lot of, uh, you know, grotesque images, psychological. Similar to, to the Resident Evil franchise, it looks a bit. Can't get the case closed. Can't wait to start playing this one, um, an original IP. And the final game from the creators of I Can't Read. This was also half price, um, $12 for Battleborn. Now, Battleborn, I think, is an online-only game. I think it's like a, uh, what do you call it? Stadium fighting game, or whatever you call those, competitive thing. Anyway, it's heroes. You have uh, different heroes, different classes that you can fight with each other. The only reason I bought this one, because I didn't know anything about it here, is it came with this collectible card, which is absolutely awesome. It comes with a character card. I don't know if it's all the same card, but um, yeah, I'm gonna keep that one sealed because that's just such a cool little goodie to throw in. It isn't like this is a collector's edition or anything like that. It's just, it says it requires the internet, so it might be online only, unfortunately, but the card, nonetheless, I don't know if I'll ever get around to playing that one, um, but yeah, cool to have it in my collection. So that is it for all of the gaming games. This was the biggest gaming games possibly I'll ever do on this channel. 60 games there. Um, absolutely massive month for me. Collecting has gone berserk. Seriously, I'm going to have to find room for all these things. Um, so anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. I'll see you guys tomorrow in Anime Games. It will also be the biggest episode of Anime Games. Seriously, everything this month has been the biggest, like the best. The biggest unboxing of Mad Men I've ever done. I've bought the most stuff this month. The most figures. Um, you know, the first episode of Figure Gains. Uh, uh, the first episode of... Uh, sorry, the, the third episode of Gaming Gains. The biggest one yet. And the third episode of Anime Gains. The biggest one yet. So stay tuned for that, guys. And I'll see you all in that. Until then, guys.